there's no doubt that a producer of media content uh, has a responsibility to their audience. What is that responsibility specifically is something that many of them, I suppose, question and dictate for themselves. Ultimately, the audience is going to make that decision. If this is a thing of value to me, I'll be watching. If it's not, you know, it doesn't make much of a mark. That's the conversation, the dialogue of content in the modern world. But all of you are living or arriving of age at a time of enormous change here. We're in a Gutenberg moment, and Gutenberg is what, at 1460? That changed humanity. It brought knowledge to people who were starved for knowledge. We're, we're in another leap like that in present tense. Uh, how it'll change us? Well, that's a story, and it's one that's ongoing. You know, narrative is the big fancy word for story, it has now arrived at the adult table of academic pursuits, of disciplines, of study, and of recognition that we as humans are the storytelling animal. That's what we are, always have been. We don't even remember facts, in fact, my neuroscientists tell me, unless they're within a narrative construct. That's how central storytelling is. The story is how we make sense of the world and ourselves in it. And that's what I've studied and experimented with my whole life. You know, I've been telling stories since I'm a little kid, mostly at my mother's behest to entertain the dinner guests. I grew up telling stories. It's amazing, you know, whatever you think about the U.S. economy, the idea that I can make a living telling stories shows that it's working in this one little way. And, and as a journalist at the Wall Street Journal, predominantly over 10 years, I arrived as a traditional reporter. You know, give me the facts and a nice pyramid structure, the biggest facts up top, finish with what you have left before you got a cut. And more and more I began to realize that narrative, that story, capital S, was the way to, to really tell something much more complex than any fact can reveal. Uh, and that's what I, I did for many years. I have a rule, and it's a rule I've used in my newspaper writing, my books, six books now, the stuff I do on camera. And it's what I call my good enough reasons rule. That people do what they do for good enough reasons. Good enough that intent flows to action the thing you can see. They may not be your reasons or mine. Some of them may be repugnant to you, as that individual may be, in fact, based on what you're taught and how you're conditioned to see the world. And that's where story lives. And all of a sudden, where do they end up? Beyond swift judgment, maybe beyond judgment period in many cases. And you start to understand, I get it now. I see why they do what they do, why they see what they see, and I see that they're not that different from me. Well, I think a big part of properly representing folks with disabilities, specifically in this case, autism, is understanding human behavior and recognizing that we as human beings make snap judgments. You know, it's hardwired in us. We're now, though, in a world in which we are pushed together we of enormous distinctiveness within each human animal. And the question is, how do we manage these instincts in a way where we're not tearing each other's throats out, in which we're not constantly in conflict, and instead finding what is, of course, deeper than what divides us, which is what we share. Get out of your skin. Get into the shoes of this person. The most unlike they are to you. The most distinct and different, the better. Find the person who you share the least with. Get in their shoes. Walk in them. See the world through their eyes. And all of a sudden, you grow larger. You're given a gift of what they see. And that becomes the story. It's not probably what you thought you were going to get walking in, because you're seeing them from the outside. You know, and even when you do get the thing you're looking for and you go, oh, perfect, all right? Oh, that's what I want. You should ask yourself, perfect for what? For whom? For what goal? What outcome? That's what great narrative does. It pushes through, doesn't discount what divides us. It finds a way to own it and through it, dig to the deep aquifer, the deep subterrain of what we all share that makes us identical to one another. That's what story's about.